hello students uh, today we are going to discuss again about one of the recent question asked in 2017 uh, anthropology mains and this question is uh, asked in section b and question number 8 and it deals with somato typing method given by sheldon and this is a 15 marker first let's see what components should this answer contain okay first we will basically talk about what exactly this is what is this what is somato typing okay and then we'll discuss about the methodology used to provide the somato typing okay and then we'll talk about the characteristics of each of these categories given here okay and then we will give applications of such a study and then finally we'll talk about the issues related to this method okay so to begin with what exactly is this what are we talking about here william sheldon okay in 1940s he actually attempted to divide the human physic or based on the human physic he divided them into three different categories okay And those categories are endo endomorphs mesomorph and ectomorph as you notice these names might be familiar to you they are based on the terminology used for germ layers the internal layer that is is endo layer so endomorph and the middle layer is a mesomorph and the the external layer led to the ectomorphs okay so there are three different categories given based on the human physic and what methodology is used to describe this so sheldon actually took photographs of 400 undergraduate students undergraduates and all of them are males and they are in the age of 16 to 20 years he took about 4000 pictures of them using a standardized method so that he could nullify any discrepancies that come during the picture taking and out of this he looked into multiple measurements and came up with a three scale system okay now let's have a look at how exactly this scale looks like and what are the characteristic features of these categories okay so as i mentioned these three categories are endomorphs mesomorph and ectomorph okay and what are those characteristic features of these three categories if you look at the body frame okay this is a large endomorphs usually have large body frame and mesomorphs usually have muscular one 
so their body is mostly made up of muscles whereas the ectomorphs have very thin and lean structure okay and you look at the fat content in these three different categories endomorphs usually have large amount of fats okay and whereas as i mentioned in case of the mesomorph very little fat and mostly muscles and here little fat and little muscle okay and the other characteristics of these people for example in case of the endomorphs they have wide hips narrow shoulders okay and mesomorphs are exactly opposite to the endomorphs here they have wide shoulders but they have narrow hips and in case of ectomorphs who are thin and lean in structure they have slim shoulders hips and the chest okay in addition to that sheldon actually gave few other characteristics such as they have in endomorphs have slim ankles and slim wrists okay and here they have strong legs and strong arms but as we already discussed these people are slim they have very thin and lean arms and legs okay so here in this table we summarize the characteristics of these three different categories given by sheldon as you notice that these endomorphs are usually they are fat they are large they have large body frame they have wide hips but narrow shoulders whereas mesomorphs have they are muscular built okay and they have little fat and more muscle they have wide shoulders but narrow hips and strong legs and arms whereas the ectomorphs are their overall body is thin and lean exactly opposite to the endomorphs and they don't have much fat and they don't have much muscle and they are slim their shoulders their hips and their chest is slim and they are thin and lean in terms of their arms and legs this is in summary the characteristics of these three categories defined by sheldon okay now let's look at what type of people fall into these categories let's write and describe this with a simple triangle to understand the scale that is given to describe these different categories on this triangle at one corner we have endomorphs and another corner we have ectomorphs and in between we have mesomorph on this corner okay and as i mentioned sheldon gave a three letter numbering for this and how does the three letter numbering looks like in case of endomorphs he used a code 711 what does it mean the 7 actually talks about the endomorphs and one in the middle the number in the middle is talking about the the characteristics of mesomorphs and the last one is talking about the ectomorphs so this model looks like a three dimensional model okay talking about three different characteristics that are possible in a single person 
So like that if you notice extreme endomorph should have a numbering as 7, 1 and 1 and mesomorph should have a numbering 1, 7, 1 being that 7 belongs to the mesomorphs. So they are extreme mesomorphs in this case and in case of extreme endomorphs the numbering looks like 1, 1 and 7. Okay? But the people actually uh, belong to different categories, they, they can fall anywhere within this triangle. right? So for example, if you know short put throwers okay, who usually are little heavy built and they fall under, they will fall somewhere here. Okay? And whereas if you are talking about people okay, who are like very thin and uh, they actually spend too much of energy in uh, in activities such as marathon runners, they fall close to the ectomorphic category and in between you can think about weightlifters. Okay. Here we talked about short put throwers. They are more like endomorphs and the weightlifters fall into the meso close to mesomorph category and whereas marathon runners fall into a category in the ectomorphic stage and average person would actually sit somewhere in the middle. So briefly this is how the numbering system given by Sheldon looks like. Okay, now let us examine the issues. Okay, sorry before going to the issues let us actually talk about the applications and then move to the issues part. Where can we use this type of somatotyping? Where exactly we can use the different body types for what information? We can use this in actually designing equipment depending on the body type. Okay? As an example, you can think about spacesuits can be designed as it fits to the the body type that we are looking at okay? and we can also make choices about what sports to choose based on the body type whether you fit into whether you are in this category and what sport should you choose or what should what sport should fit to your body type in a similar manner you can choose where exactly you fit and what exactly suits better to you. Okay. And finally, you can even do some predictions in epidemiology such as people who are endomorphs, they are more prone to because they have large body fat, they are more prone to diseases okay. such as diabetes and heart problems okay and whereas ectomorphs those people who are really thin who are really weak okay there may be prone to diseases such as tb and pneumonia Okay. So, like that you can make certain predictions using these different body types. So these are some applications using uh, somatotypes given by Sheldon and for that matter any different types of somatotypes should have applications like this. And now let us look at the, the last version or the last uh, thing about this are uh, the issues. What are the issues? We have gone through how this model is made, we have gone through what exactly this model is providing. Now let us have a look at what are the issues, what type of issues uh, can we come up with by looking at this kind of method. The first and foremost is to do with how these measurements are taken. Okay? So we are talking about issues here. Right? As we have noticed that they have taken students in the age group of 16 to 20 and all of them are males. They all belong to the one small group in a university and all of them are males. So random sampling is not done. 
to make any conclusions you need a method that uses random sampling and comes up with a conclusion based on that but that is a flaw in this method and next as i mentioned only males are considered there is no data for females taken so this only applies to males but not to the females and another problem that you can think about is with age they have taken 16 to 20 year age group okay their body types will have a different influence from the environment and the same body type might change over time so environmental factors that can influence the body over time is not considered and on top of this this method actually uses the photographs taken and the measurements done on those photographs okay so which is a type of anthroposcopic method and there are some inherent issues in this and later heath and carter address some of these issues and especially the anthroposcopic methodology and they instead used anthropo metric methods where they have directly made the measurements from the subjects okay so this is still widely considered in this field that is developed based on what sheldon had proposed okay so these are all different functional issues we are talking here to my mind i actually think about another structural issue which you might have at least some of you might have thought about what is that in the triangle that we have seen it looks as if it's a three dimensional model okay when we have given this number it looks like a three dimensional model but as you notice that from endo to ecto from fat to lean it's a continuum what what we notice is a continual change it is not a three dimensional factor so structurally there is a flaw in this kind of method so you can discuss all these aspects related to somat somatotyping given by sheldon for a 15 marker okay thank you